I'm gonna let Lauren talk a little There's bit. There's what we want, but just practically speaking, the deficit each year is trillions of dollars. And, and Elon, deficit, by the way, is just the amount each year that the government spends more than it takes in. And I think the U.S. debt at this year, which is just the accumulation of all the deficits that you haven't managed to pay off, that's at like $26 trillion. So yeah, there aren't enough billionaires in the country, perhaps even on the planet, frankly, in order to pay that off. And the thing is, billionaire wealth is finite. Once you eat it all up, there's not going to be any more left. I don't know how rich you think Elon Musk is, but no, he's not rich enough to foot the bill of the US government. And then the next part of the interview that I want to go over is just Elon Musk talking about why conceptually, it doesn't really make sense to take wealth away from people who have shown to be very good at creating wealth and give it to the government who by and large suck at it and just everything in general. And keep in mind here with this clip, he is talking about wealth allocation specifically in regard to taxation. You know, at some point, really what you're doing is capital allocation. So you're, you're not, it's not money for personal expenditures. It's it, what you're doing is, is capital allocation. And it, it does not make sense to take uh, the, the job of capital allocation away from people who have demonstrated great skill in capital allocation and give it to uh, you know, an entity that has demonstrated very poor skill in, in capital allocation, which is the government. Uh, I mean, you can think of the government essentially uh, as a corporation in the limit. Uh, it, it is, it is a, the government is simply the biggest corporation with a monopoly on violence and, with, and where you have no recourse. Any businessman would have preferred to know I was governor or president or king of the continent, as I understand that taxation is theft. You can't make a business thrive if everyone is taxed into oblivion. Everyone just moves it to a nation with cheaper labor. I run the new government by donation because it lets people control the size of government. Taxation by the former government made Elon move to Texas. So if you are the government, you want to step aside from manipulating the free market so long as they don't pollute the environment or endanger public safety. You have a situation where they never audit the Fed and you realize that it's a currency that's really backed on power and manipulation, uh, dominating over the world's oil economy through intimidation and all this. And you realize that it's no longer backed on gold and that only 20% is actual cash and the rest is uh, digital numbers in the sky. You realize that, you know, I mean, the nations could dump the dollar at some point. And I, I know that a lot have uh, tried and this is kind of why you have Libya taken down because when they make their gold dinar, uh, their gold currency, it really kind of flies in the face of uh, all the fiat currency in its true value. And uh, you have a psychopath like Hillary Clinton saying, uh, we came, we saw, he died, stuff like that. Totally detached from the fact she's being observed by the entire international community as a leader uh, of a nation, a superpower nation. Uh, you have to realize that it's an idiocracy and the way, only way out of it regarding recourse is to talk about it, is to have intellects reach a consensus. I think it's a much better way to do things when you have a government by donation because that allows the people to control the size of government. Government doesn't uh, get out of hand and do things that the people don't want it to do. And certainly businesses don't like being taxed it doesn't allow them to take off and with their dreams or thrive. And that's bad. That is, uh, it makes it hard on small business. And uh, all this uh, COVID nonsense has really bolstered big box store business a lot. It's kind of uh, redoing this structure of society in a way that we, we might not fully appreciate in the long term. Uh, I think that uh, 
Andrew Yang was right about universal basic income as Elon, you know that uh, robots are going to take over with automated functions of society. The humans are being replaced by robots in the workplace by about 82%. So uh, if you don't have a universal basic income, your nation will have serious uh, consequences regarding poverty and such. So we have all kind of collectively accepted the idea of uh, fiat currency, trillions in debt. It's almost like nobody cares, you know, and the dollar is just sitting there at some point where it's uh, somewhere comparable with the rest of the global economy. But um, you're seeing kind of a, a, a tuck away from all these... Uh, national currencies and uh or an evaluation of cryptocurrency and nations are pondering if they should uh crack down on cryptocurrency or or join in and everyone's a bit confused uh and i think if you make bitcoin the main currency uh you're you're going to have an electricity crisis and uh, to power all of these servers going around the clock to make crazier and crazier code function. So it's uh, something uh, we need to think about what really has value, uh, what has a, a, a free market capitalist society taught us and uh it, it's uh it's made everything for sale and that's something that i don't really like when it comes to uh the family unit you know you don't want everything to be for sale right like it will break down society um uh, if you don't uh restructure what our priorities are and uh you have this housing crisis. Well, we've been ripping each other off, you know. Rent is banned on the entire continent, and you have the former government uh, fumbling what to do with rent, and uh, you have all these tent cities popping up because nobody really cares about the homeless in a psychopath society. And yes, all that wealth is misallocated by a bumbling government that doesn't really uh, allocate the money to the homeless crisis as it should. And uh, everyone's confused, where's the money going? You know, it should be going to contractors to build homes. Uh, if everyone wants to do tiny houses, that seems to be the route that uh, Seattle is, is going. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a little tight-knit community like that. I think we can do a little bit better than the tiny house, though. We could give people a little something more than that tiny box. Uh, but uh, this is where we are. Uh, we could easily, independently of the government, have our own uh, redistribution of wealth we could have a, a card that we create just for everybody and uh and the rich could pool in by donation whenever anyone wants to donate into the pot the collective pot you see what i'm saying this is the solution there's there's ways to uh, uh disempower our need for big government and i think that all these ideas are important and uh, we should be doing them. We should be coming up with solutions to get around a, a government that isn't serving the people anymore as it should. Uh, it seems to be kind of like a last ditch effort just to bribe everybody with money. You know, that seems to be the trend. But uh, what people want is uh, sustainability, you know, they don't want to be starving and impoverished. And when they are, what happens is you have uh, 
mass looting and all this stuff, you have uh, a destabilization of society. If you actually look after the poor, that stabilizes society and uh, it makes it better and more comfortable for everybody. There's less crime, there's less fear of theft. And uh, no one wants to be mugged at gunpoint or anything like this. Uh, it's, it's better to take care of the people that are that desperate. So reorganizing everything is important. Uh, we, can, we can potlatch in the face of Western society and teach the silly white man <laughs> uh, about priorities, you know, about how uh, being rich and wealth isn't necessarily where it's all at, guys. We want, we want to be rich in spirit, you know, we want to be rich in creativity and uh, rich in innovation. Uh, we don't want to just be consumerists. We don't want to just be buying things all the time anymore. And that can make a lazy society. I know a, a lot of the blue collar people fear for a, a lazy bone society with redistribution of wealth or universal basic income and a lack of desire to do anything. We're supposed to be doing what we love, you know? It's your life. Your life is what's important. Doing what you love is important. And if you can contribute to society, that is also important. So we want to do all of these things. <laughs> Always remember that family is more important than money. I think things are going to be looking good if you consolidate all leadership on the planet regarding the military and uh, taking away from the focus on military national leadership to the world army so nations aren't fighting with any each other anymore. You make a more stable environment for the world to where everybody can thrive and we can all focus on the economy. We can all focus on coming out of poverty collectively as a planet. My cat is playing with this chess piece on the floor here. I think that's what's important as a planet that all humanity is content and happy and not impoverished, not starving, not having some kind of humanitarian crisis regarding power and control, regarding uh, sustainability. We need to think smart we have overfished the ocean and jellyfish are taking over. It might sound funny, but it's really not. We don't want to suffer of hypoxia as a planet. Uh, we need to clean up the Pacific garbage patch for this reason. And I think that my generation really aims to do that. I think that we should be uh, building greenhouses along the rivers and we should be making more f fish hatcheries and we should be taking care that uh, pollution doesn't take over our rivers so that the fish can thrive. Regarding architecture, we don't adapt to high weather and severe climate. So the idiocracy keeps building 
house is out of wood, the cookie cutter way. It makes you think of the story of the three little pigs. You want to build your house not necessarily out of bricks, <laughs> but perhaps one that can withstand flooding. Imagine if your area flooded and you needed a floating house or a floating room. Well, you can prepare for that in advance as a society. You can prepare for high winds as a society if you create a dome instead of this square box. So consider using stronger materials and redoing the shapes of your houses. I think it's important for people to move from the East Coast given the hurricane maps are going to continue bombarding the East Coast. If you look at the data, I think that sometimes it's important for people to just move. If you are in an area that has volcanic activity, I know the entire state of Washington at one point was covered in magma. So we could see that happen again in the future. We have never really seen what volcanic activity can really do as humanity. We've only been on the planet for a blip of the radar. So when you go take geology in college, you'll see that uh, if Mount Rainier goes, you know, that mudslide could go all the way down to Tacoma. All these uh, little towns and, and cities in the way of a volcanic mudslide, you're not going to survive a pyroclastic flow if that happens. So take better observance of where you are on the planet. Move to safer areas. I think that that's something that you can do, that we can all do proactively. And we want to make sure that we can feed everybody. Uh, when India had a hunger crisis, they discovered wheat. You see what I'm saying? We discover our, our basic staples again. Uh, lentils and millet. You see, potatoes. Well, I'm not going to uh, bombard you much longer. Um, I love you guys. People of Earth.